everybody. It's Bishop Barron. I want to send my very warmest Christmas greetings to all of our Word on Fire family, all those who've used Word on Fire materials this past year, all those associated with our, us and our mission. So God bless all of you this holy season. And I want to share a quick little reflection with you on what I'm going to call the Jewishness of the, Christ, the Christmas stories. It's really impossible to read these great Christmas accounts in Luke and Matthew without attending to the very rich history of Israel out of which they come. I'll give you just three examples, all uh, Marian. So the first one, we talk about the Annunciation, when the angel announces to Mary she'll be the mother of the Lord. And what does the angel say? Well, you'll be mother of this Most High, he will be called Great. And then the angel says, he'll be given the throne of David his father, and his reign will be without end. Well, what is that? That's an explicit reference to 2 Samuel 7, the prophecy of Nathan to David, where the Lord says, I'm going to build you a house, David. It'll last forever, and a descendant of yours will th- sit on this throne forever. We well, you know the Davidic line ended at the Babylonian captivity about 500 years before the time of Jesus. It ended. And yet the angel says, this prophecy is still going to come true, and this one will be the descendant of David who will reign forever. We won't understand the meaning of Jesus without seeing him as the fulfillment of that prophecy. Here's a second Marian reference. We speak of the visitation. When she goes in haste after the Annunciation into the hill country of Judah to visit her cousin. Well, the attentive Jewish reader in the first century, when he heard hill country of Judah, you know what he was thinking about? In the story of the Ark of the Covenant, when Israel lost the Ark of the Covenant, it was it ended up, it's a long story, but ended up in the hill country of Judah. And David went there to, to fetch it, and then he brought it back to Jerusalem, dancing with reckless abandon before it. What do we find now? Mary goes to the hill country of Judah. Now, why? Because she is the true Ark of the Covenant. If the Ark of the Covenant held the the remnants of the ten, the tablets of the Ten Commandments, Mary holds within her womb the very presence of the Lord. So she's the true Ark of the Covenant in the hill country of Judah. More to it, John the Baptist, his mother says, the minute your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leapt in my womb for joy. Well, who is the infant John the Baptist but a new David doing his exuberant dance in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant? Last Marian reference, what we call the presentation. So Joseph and Mary bring the child Jesus into the temple. This is the fulfillment of the prophet Ezekiel. Go back to Ezekiel chapter 10. The corruption of the temple had become so great, idolatry and and, uh, all sorts of bad practices were going on. So it says that the Shekinah, which means the the glory of, of the Lord, up and left the temple. It's one of the saddest, most disturbing passages in the whole Old Testament. God's glory has left his temple. And there's no account, mind you, in the Old Testament of it ever coming back. The child Jesus being brought into the temple by Mary, who symbolizes the Ark of the Covenant, signals the return of the Shekinah, the return of the glory of the Lord to his holy place. Now, my point here, friends, and we could go on and on with these stories, Every aspect of the, of the Christmas stories are filled with the Old Testament. Think even of the, of the three kings coming from a distant land to, to honor uh, the newborn king. What is that but the fulfillment of Isaiah chapter 60? They will come with dromedaries and, ca- and camels from a distant land to, to worship the Messiah. It's the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. My point is, you can't read these Christmas stories apart from the Old Testament. The Old Testament now opens up their depth, their luminosity, and their meaning to us. So I might recommend this Christmas, go back to those sources. Read these stories with fresh eyes in light of the Old Testament. And again, a very blessed, very happy Christmas to the whole Word on Fire family. God bless you. 